Resistors are one of the most common components you'll encounter when working with electronics. The resistance value of resistors can range anywhere from thousands of an ohm all the way up to millions of ohms. And so it's important to have a good understanding of how to identify these resistance values when trying to find resistors for a project. Often if the body of a resistor is large enough, such as with a wire wound power resistor like this one, the resistance value and sometimes other information actually gets printed directly onto the surface. But when the resistor is much smaller, like with this quarter watt carbon film resistor, that information needs to be shown in a different way. Otherwise, as you can imagine, the print would just be too small to read or too small to even print on the surface to begin with. And this, if you haven't already guessed, is where color bands and the resistor color code comes into play. The colored bands on a resistor can tell you everything you need to know about its value as long as you understand how to read them. Resistors like these can have three, four, five, or even six colored bands, each of which are used to denote the resistance value in ohms, the tolerance, which basically tells us how accurate or precise that value is, and on some resistors, we can also glean something called the temperature coefficient. More on that later. We can also determine things like the power rating based on the physical size of the resistor itself. Okay, let's work through a practical example using a fairly typical looking axial lead through hole resistor. This one with four color bands. This would be probably the most common type of resistor that you'll encounter when practicing electronics. The first two bands always give us the first two digits of the resistance value. The third band represents the multiplier, while the fourth band represents tolerance. When trying to determine which way to orientate the resistor before reading the values, sometimes you'll find that the first stripe is painted just a little closer to the edge of the resistor, while the last stripe isn't quite as close to the edge. Sometimes too, depending on the manufacturer, the tolerance band can appear slightly larger in width, with silver and gold being the most common tolerance values that you'll encounter on these four band resistors. If you see a gold or silver band, straight away, you can assume that that is the tolerance band and orientate the resistor so that it appears on the right hand side and then proceed to read the value one band at a time from left to right. So if we take a look at this resistor, we can see that the first band is brown, and if we match that to the table, we can see that the first resistance value, therefore, is 1. The second band is black, and again, if we look at the table, we can determine that the second digit of the resistance value is going to be 0. We know that the third band is the multiplier, which means that we multiply this number, 1 and 0, so 10, by the multiplier value. Again, if we look at brown in the multiplier column, we can see that the multiplier in this case is 10. So we go 10 times 10 and get a value, a resistance value of 100 ohms. Next, we can interpret the fourth band, which in this case is gold and tells us the tolerance value. So in this specific case, it's a 100 ohms resistor plus or minus 5%. So that tells us that the actual value of this resistor may range from 95 ohms through to 105 ohms. And if we take a quick reading with the multimeter, there we go. So in this instance of a four color band resistor, we know that the first and second band values tell us the resistance value. The third band tells us the multiplier and the fourth band tells us the tolerance value. When we look at the resistor color code, we can ignore the third band and temperature coefficient columns for now because we don't have enough bands to tell us these values and they're not applicable. We'll get to these in some of the other examples. Let's talk a little bit about resistor tolerance. Resistor tolerance tells us more precisely what the value of a resistor is since the resistance value that we determine based on the color bands, it's, it's approximate. The tolerance value tells us how precise that number is. For example, a 220 ohm resistor with a 5% tolerance actually has a value of plus or minus 5% from that 220 ohm value. So based on that, we know that the value may fall anywhere between 209 ohms 
and 231 ohms, despite the fact that the color bands are telling us it's a 220 ohm resistor. Whereas a more precise resistor with a 1% tolerance, let's say we have a 470 ohm resistor with a 1% tolerance, we would say that the value would fall somewhere between 465.3 and 474.7 ohms. So again, much more precise. And the simple answer as to why resistors are manufactured with lower and higher degrees of precision is just cost. It costs more for manufacturers to make resistors that have much closer tolerances. And in reality, for most hobby applications, 5 or 10% margin of error in these resistance values is totally okay. It's not going to present any problems. The process for reading the resistance value on a three color band resistor is very similar. Essentially, we're looking at the same thing minus the tolerance band. So again, if we read this as brown being the first digit of our resistance value, which we know is one, black being the second digit of the resistance value, which we know is zero, and the third band, brown again, being the multiplier value, again, in this case being 10, we get 100 ohms. But what do we do about the accuracy of the resistor? When the tolerance band is missing on a three band resistor, the tolerance value is 20%. That's the default tolerance value. So essentially on this one, again, we have a 100 ohm resistor plus or minus 20%. So the value of the resistor could be anywhere from 80 ohms all the way through to potentially 120 ohms. Okay, let's turn our attention now to how to read the resistance value of a resistor with five color bands. Five band resistors are typically higher precision resistors. So a resistor with a tolerance value of somewhere between one and 4%. When it comes to reading the value, the first, second, and third band tell us the value. The fourth band denotes the multiplier and the fifth band tells us the tolerance. So in this case, we have our first band of yellow, which is four. Then we have violet, which is seven. The third band is blue, which is six. So we have a value of 476 multiplied by the fourth band, which is the multiplier, in this case black, so one, 476 times one. So it's a 476 ohm resistor. The fifth band is brown, and we're looking at the tolerance column now which means that it's 476 ohms plus or minus 1%. Okay, now let's turn our attention to six color band resistors. And I'll start by saying that the process for determining the resistance value of both a five and six color band resistor is exactly the same. And so if we use the same color bands, the first five color bands that we used in our previous example, and then add a six band, we know that the resistance value for this resistor is exactly the same as before. So we don't need to re-explain the process for determining the value. Uh, but what we do need to know is what does that six color band actually tell us? And it denotes the temperature coefficient, sometimes referred to as the failure rate of the resistor. The most common color for this six band that you're likely to encounter is brown. And if we take a look at the resistor color code again, specifically the temperature coefficient column, we can see that brown uh, represents 100 parts per million per Kelvin. And what that means or equates to is that for every 10 degrees Celsius change in temperature, the resistance value changes by 0.1%. Now, I share this for the sake of completeness so that we can look at these six band resistors and understand what the resistance value is. But temperature coefficient is mostly irrelevant to hobby applications. Uh, and so don't be too concerned if you, if you happen to own one of these six color band resistors. Uh, being able to determine what the resistance value is is probably the most important thing you can do. The temperature coefficient really is only applicable for very precise applications. And one final example, and I'll try and keep this one brief, it's the zero ohm resistor. Now, if you think back to the resistor color code, you may recall that the color black denotes zero. Now, zero ohm resistors, they're easily identified by their single black band, and they are an axial lead through hole component in this case, but they're basically a wire link 
packaged inside a component that looks like a resistor. And you may be thinking that makes no sense at all. If their function is just to act as a wire and offer zero resistance, then why not use a jumper wire or something like that? And the reason that they use this resistor uh, lookalike component is because components on printed circuit boards are typically not placed manually. They're inserted uh, automatically using machines. And so by creating a resistor lookalike that acts as a wire link, the manufacturing process, it's streamlined. It allows the, the same machine to be used when placing these connections and it eliminates the need for a separate machine that would be needed for installing jumper wires. The resistance is, I should say, approximately zero, but typically these components have a maximum resistance value of about 10 to 50 milliohms. So for all intents and purposes, it's practically zero. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please click like and subscribe to see more content like this soon.